Now that we're in mid-October, Halloween is in full swing. And it's typically the time of year reserved for some new great and not-so-great horror movies to grace our screens. And because great original content seems to be in short supply these days, at least as far as the mainstream is concerned, it looks like Hollywood is dipping back into established IP once again. Let's take a look. For the longest time, there was nothing. But then, it appeared. A beast not from this earth. Smiting the ones who deserved it. The ones who didn't. And everyone in between. So here we have a feature based on an early 1980s Stephen King short story, also called The Monkey. Basically, it tells the tale of a cursed monkey doll. Each time it bangs its little symbols, somebody in its vicinity dies. I enjoyed the story when I first read it way back when, though it never struck me as enough material to warrant a full feature film. So for those who know it, expect some padding to have been added to the original tale. Whoever controls it controls life and death. And those deaths are really fucked up. Holy now the premise here is that the monkey indiscriminately kills each time it bangs its symbols. And it's up to our main character, Hal, played by Theo James, who, by the way, I absolutely love in the Gentleman series on Netflix, to put an end to it. Hal first discovers the monkey's deadly powers as a child, and after thinking he got rid of it, rediscovers it as an adult when the deaths begin all over again. And so he tries to take it upon himself to try and put an end to its evil once and for all. Only things don't work out exactly as planned. Everybody dies. And that's life. It's a goddamn mess in there. Have you been up there? It's like that restaurant. Spaghetti City. From the style and tone and the people behind the film, we can infer a number of things right away. It looks like a dark film, building more on suspense and the supernatural than on gore, which is in line with Stephen King's work. But it also looks like there's going to be a comedic element as well dark comedy, albeit, which is also a bit surprising. You see, the short story isn't funny. Like, at all. It's one of King's more unsettling stories, to be honest, so it remains to be seen how well comedy will translate here. But done right, I think it could work well with a premise like this one. And it's also leaning into Final Destination territory here, where the more outrageous and far-fetched the kills, the more fun it'll be for the audience. Everything's fine. Come on, baby, let's have some fun. One of the great things about the short story was how Hal was compelled to turn the key which made the monkey bang its symbols. Even though he knew what would happen, he just couldn't help himself. Almost as if he was under a spell or maybe a supernatural addiction to the power of life and death over those around him. As the reader, it was genuinely terrifying to place yourself in poor Hal's shoes and, like him, wonder what it would take to stop this demonic force. And since this is also made by Osgood Perkins, who made Long Legs, an unsettling horror in its own right, we can expect more than a few genuinely creepy, if not outright horrifying, moments to drive home the absurd and unexpected. The difference between the two films will be in tone, certainly, but also in that Long Legs had a memorable villain in Nick Cage, while this film will rely on a simple doll to play the villain. But it's not as though franchises like Annabelle and The Boy didn't pull that off successfully already. As a premise, it's relatively simple, which is also what makes it so great. Good stories don't need to be complicated, especially when it comes to genre fiction, such as horror or action. It's the characters and their inner journeys that fuel such stories. And you don't need endless exposition or complex twists and turns to delve deeply into a character's mindset and motivations. The complexity comes from the inner struggle 
in as much as the external challenges. Even more so, I would say, in a great story. And I hope that's what they go with here, as it's what made the short story so memorable to begin with. And honestly, I'm surprised they're saving this for February of next year, as we only get the trailer in October rather than the horror film itself at a time of year when everyone's primed for it. Hopefully it's so they can have more time to fine tune it and not because it doesn't live up to the source material. Guess we'll see one way or the other. But these are just my two cents. Give me yours. Let me know in the comments below if you read The Monkey or the Skeleton Crew anthology it came in and if you're excited to see it. As always, if you like what you saw, click that like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell to stay updated with the latest content. Until next time, stay creative.